Hello and welcome to the Friday, March 17th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a great malware reverse engineering diary from Xavier. Xavier is writing about an Excel spreadsheet that he found. The spreadsheet is mostly in Chinese, looks like some kind of invoice and it's interesting in that it uses well not a totally uncommon but a little bit unusual uh, these days a way of actually executing a code it's not going the normal uh, macro route or such instead it's using the relatively old now but sadly still used and sometimes effective equation editor vulnerability now in order to exploit this vulnerability we don't have like visual uh, base or something like this in the Excel spreadsheet. Instead, we do have uh, some shell code, so essentially a bytecode. And uh, Xavier walks you through how to analyze this type of code, how to get started, how to find it, and uh, then also how to run it through the shell code debugger, which I believe Xavier has written about uh, before to actually figure out what's going on with this code and what it is trying to accomplish, which also then points to the equation editor vulnerability as the actual exploit being used in order to start this particular software. But you see, for example, also IP address and such that are becoming pretty apparent uh, as you're looking at this code. The advantage, of course, is, well, you could just run uh, this particular Excel spreadsheet, uh, but that's always a little bit risky. You may also not have uh, the right old version of Excel sitting around in order to quickly execute this particular piece of malware. So sometimes it's safer and often also uh, more conclusive uh, if you're reverse analyzing the actual uh, code. It's always easy to miss something if you're just executing the code because you may not trigger all the particular functionality depending on how you are running the particular piece of malware. And then we got yet another great write-up from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency about how a Telerik vulnerability was recently exploited to gain access to a government IIS server. Progress Telerik, it's essentially a software suite, the library component, whatever you want to call it, that runs within ASP.NET. It's part of the user interface that is used in the web application, and it suffered from a critical deserialization vulnerability back in 2019. So yet another older vulnerability. The reason it wasn't found in this particular instance, even though they did vulnerability scanning, was that this particular uh, component was installed in an unusual path, which then meant that it wasn't caught by this particular vulnerability scanner. Common problem with vulnerability scanners is that, well, uh, they expect files to have certain names, they expect certain headers and such, and if any of that is off, they may not detect a vulnerable component like this. What I like about this write-up is that it's yet another example how we can learn from others' mistakes. So uh, take the chance, uh, take advantage of this, and take a look if there's anything you can take away from uh, this uh, fairly uh, detailed and uh, nice-to-read uh, write-up. You probably have seen uh, plenty of emails that claim to come from DocuSign, but then include either a straightforward malware or a link to phishing pages and the like. Well, uh, DocuSign isn't the only service offering you to sign documents electronically, and well, other services suffer from the same problem that they're easily abused. The latest example here, thanks to Avast for the write up, is Adobe Acrobat Sign. Now, the way it is in particular here obvious or abused is not to directly kind of lead to a phishing page, but instead to make it easier uh, to send a link to the victim that will then later lead to malware. 
The way this all starts is that the victim receives a normal looking email with a link to Adobe Acrobat Sign, a legitimate service. So first of all, it makes it past all of your various scanners that you may have uh, in your environment. And also the victim may think it's a plausible thing and plausible email to receive. If they're clicking on uh, the uh, link, they'll be sent to Adobe Acrobat Sign. So nothing bad here, but the document they're then presented with will link them to the actual malware. So it's kind of a nice trick uh, to tell your users about something uh, good to include in like a uh, awareness presentation. And we got a couple of vulnerabilities to round out the week with. Uh, first of all, a Zoom release an update fixing two vulnerabilities that they are considering high severity. One is a local privilege escalation in Zoom for the Windows installer. The second one is a little bit more interesting in if you're using a local SMB share to save Zoom recordings and then access that via the Zoom website, there can be issue where uh, then an attacker may be able to gain access to that SMB share. And Array Networks published an update that patches a remote code execution vulnerability in its SL VPN gateway. At its core, it's a file read vulnerability but can lead uh, to a remote code execution. So uh, something that we have seen in similar ways exploited on uh, various other uh, SL VPN uh, gateways. And finally, we got a critical vulnerability in the Aruba ClearPass Policy Manager. Well, uh, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. Uh, please subscribe and uh, Spotify actually also uh, has this podcast available. Apple Podcast, of course. And I think I have mentioned before also that you can listen to this podcast via Amazon Flash Briefing if you have one of the smart speakers. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.